Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Renamic. Berto Willis, your host. Thank you so kind of being part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Egberto, what did you do there on the back ends, baby? Been working on setting up. You want me to show you a little something that I did? I, I'm not, I, I can't show you the, on the exact, but uh, this application here is an application that I'm used to help me automate a few pro, a few things. So I'm using that as an automation method. So there's a whole lot that I'm trying to get done. whole lot that I'm trying to get done in the back end to make sure that I can give you guys, I continue to give you guys a seamless program because it is hard doing it all by my lonesome. By the way, folks, today I had the wonderful company of brother uh, Bruce Pollard. He was in the studio with me at KPFT 90.1 FM. Go check that out. It, the video out, out, well, I'll be putting the process video out a little bit later, but we had a good time. And by the way, I got a big surprise yesterday from my wife. She went ahead. She says, I am tired of seeing you on those, uh, what is it? Uh, collarless t-shirts on the show. And since I don't wear a suit all the time or a jacket all the time, so she wanted to get something nice. So for Christmas, it, the lady didn't have it in time, but... She got it to me yesterday, and check this out, an embroidered uh, Politics Done Right shirt that uh, she made here locally in Kingwood. She found a woman who makes it here in Kingwood, and man, I love it. So I, I love it so much that I'm telling all my peeps, man, uh, you know, anybody who contributes to KPFT on the 100 bucks level, I am going to go ahead and make a t-shirt for you. Because, um, look, I got to find a way ra raise some stuff. So my, my $100 contributors are more, the T-shirts going to be yours. I'm going to try to take a whole lot of orders and then just go ahead and ask the lady to make a bunch of it. Because I saw the T-shirt and I'm like, hey, babes, that's kind of nice. Don't you guys think so? Good, good new T-shirt to add to the repertoire. Anyhow, um, we're going to have a great show for you today. Like I said, I enjoyed having Bruce Pollard in the studio with me today. And I would love anybody in the Houston area who wants to come into the studio with me. Just make, just let me know, and um, we will be, we will be able to, you know, you know, tell you how to get there, or drop you off, and sit down and have a chat with me. Just check, check out, uh, check it out. Actually, I think I put it on the, uh, if I recall correctly, I may have it on my Facebook. Let Let's see if I have it on my Facebook with Bruce out there. Bruce Pollard, yeah, Bruce. <laughs> You think it's worth more than a hundred bucks, Bruce? All right, you. Well, I know you. Bruce is a hell of a contributor. You, you name the price, Bruce. You name the price, and we do it. Um, check it out, guys. I want to play this one for everybody because I love when I have my. Uh, where, where is that darn thing, Bruce? Since I put that stuff up today on, uh, I think I had. I, I want to play this thing, guys. Bear with me a second as I find it because. I'm going to find that sucker and get it on, on air because I want folks to see how it looks when, bear with me, bear with me, don't, don't, and those of you that are listening on, on, on the channel, hang with me guys, hang with me because, oh God, I can't get into it right now, it seems like it. Well, I tell you what, the next time I play a video, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out and find it for you guys. Anyhow. What is the program about today? The program about today is covering three things. Tulsi Gabbard really got on to, uh, what's his name? Uh, the second one is going to be Southwest. Southwest was shareholder issues. And numero tres, Republicans out to get Donald Trump. All right, we're going to have a good one. Let's see if we, if my make.com sent off all my frequencies. Yes, it sent it all off automatically. So we are, we are one other step of automation, folks. We're one other step of automation. Uh, yeah, I think it should be on YouTube. You're right about that, brother, brother, brother man. I think I placed it on YouTube too. And now it's also on YouTube. All right, let's, let's do that. This was, this was us today. Let, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Remember, this is All your right, show. folks, this is Bruce Pollard in the studio with Egberto Willis on 
Politics done right. We are going to have a great show today. Guess what? Bruce is going to be talking about re- what, what you going to be talking about? We're going to talk about recycling Christmas trees so they can be made into mulch and make new Christmas trees. And we are going to talk about Alzheimer drugs fraud, Chile's new constitution defeat, and the Ukraine corporate sellout. We're going to tie all three of those together. But of course, you guys know if you call and change the subject, this show belongs to you. Politics done right show belongs to whom again, uh, Bruce? To you all, and we're hoping this whole new year is going to make for a much better year for everybody. Amen. We're going to do it, folks. Politics on Right on KPFT, 90.1 FM, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at noon. That's a big 10-4. All right. Hey, was was Bruce cool or what? All right, let me get that out. Come on, get out, get out. That Okay, Bruce, I got you, I got you. Was that cool or not, folks? Was Bruce cool or what? Gave my tree the goat form. <laughs> Tulsi, get a party. All right, let's get started. Um, let's see what's... Michael Rudnan says, Oh, leg is feeling worse than yesterday. Still have hematomas on my back, thigh, and foot. Worried about blood clots and internal bleeding schedule and ultrasound for January 2nd. No clinic open earlier than that with technicians on staff. Have to wonder if my craft insurance will cover any of this. They have to cover it. If my out-of-pocket expenses are about to jump, leaving for my aunt's birthday party now. Wait a minute. Um, how is... We don't want to mess with clots in your legs, um, Rudnan. We don't want to do that. If, is it well, is it, if, if the leg is starting to increasingly swell, you need to go to an emergency room. Uh, we don't want you throwing clots. So, I mean, um, please uh, make sure and take care of yourself, sir. All right. Paul Fleming is checking in. Michael Rudnan is in. Alistair Waters is in. Uh, Bridge MCP is in. Lee Grant is in. Alistair Waters is in. Tom C is in. Uh, we also have Eric Hayes on the fly. And let's see, did I? Yvette Avery Herod, how you doing, Yvette? Yvette's here. Melanie Keelan, Barcelona, Spain, is in the house. Bruce Pollard, second time I'm talking with Bruce today. E2247, welcome aboard, my brother. And Lee Grant is in the house. Wow, we're filled up today. We're filling up. Peggy Lopez. Peggy Lopez actually spoke on air today at KPFT 90.1 FM. So everybody got a chance to listen to Peggy Lopez. Peggy, and you had a lot to say. I learned something from your statement today, Peggy. And like I said, I enjoy learning. Okay, from Michael Rudnan says, Newsweek, Congressman stop another non-truthful office seeker Santos bill aims to ban the obvious. Candidates who lie. Among his list of fabrications, Santos claimed that he had graduated from Branch College, worked for Goldman Sachs and Citigroup, and had family-owned real estate business that managed at least 13 properties and was a descendant of Holocaust survivors. All the claims were found to be false. I mean, but, you know, again, there is no, there's nothing surprising about this. We've got to remember this. Donald Trump, Donald Trump made lying vogue and penalty less. In other words, the people who vote for Donald Trump has told folks that are in that party, you can lie, you can pilfer us, you can fleece us, and we will still vote for you. Do you know that after these guys came out with all the truths about this guy, that several people said they still think, Republicans that is, they still think This guy is worthy of holding office. After lying the way he did, nothing that he said in his resume was true. What can I say? Michael Rodden says, Richie Torres tweeted, I am now I'm introducing a bill to require candidates to disclose under oath their employment, educational and military history so we can punish candidates who lie to voters about their qualifications. It will be called the Stop Another Non-Truth Office Seeker Santos Act. I love that. Newsweek, Michael Rudnan. Full list of George Santos claims that have now been debunked. There are some, uh, there are, there are some real whoppers on there. Santos lied about being biracial, lied about his mother dying in, on 9-11, faked his medical records lied about connections to uh, Pulse nightclub shooting victims, lied about creating an animal rights rescue charity. What else can I say? 
Alistair Water says, Trippy e troll. Hi, everybody. Hi, Alistair Beautiful Waters. Bridge MCP says, Michael Rudnan, large hematoma can be dangerous. Yes, Rudnan. Please check it out. I want to, are you still in the house, Rudnan, or did you have to leave already? Let me know if you're still in the house, sir. Let me know if you're still in the house. Uh, para ver, para ver. Uh, Paul Fleming says, What's up? Eric Hayes says, At least you're live. Yes, I am live today. Echo is now gone, according to Tom C. Welcome, Tom C. Uh, para ver que más tengo. Egberto, what did you do there on the back end? I showed you earlier with the make product that I purchased, and now we're using the make product to do some automations. In other words, when we start our process, it starts sending things to different places so that the program can be showed on different live streams. Uh, Tom C., let's see what else we got here. Peggy Lopez says, hi, all. Hope you're having fun-filled holiday season. Yes, we are. Um, I have fun just being with you guys. Uh, Eric Hayes says, Egberto, just don't show your back end. I tr I'll try not to. Yvette Avery Harrod says, afternoon, PDR Posse. Hello, Yvette. And Bridge MCP loves the shirt. <laughs> Eric Hayes, professional progressives. Yvette Avery Harrod says, nice shirt as well. Melanie Keelan is in the house. Tom C says, nice shirt, Egberto. And they bow tie for New Year's Eve party. I need a bow tie now? Okay, I'll see if I can get a bow tie. All right, Eric Hayes says, no shirts, but one like yours, good. You like that, huh? Uh, Bruce says it's worth more than $100. Uh, what else we got here? YouTube, I think, and I played that for you, Bruce. But he says, Happy New Year. And Paul Fleming says, say this with me. Studying history will sometimes disturb you. Studying history will sometimes upset you. Studying history will sometimes make you furious. If studying history always makes you feel happy and proud, you probably aren't studying history. History. Perfecto. I love that one. Eric Hayes says, duct tape and bailing wire for all repairs. Hmm. Gave my tree to the goat farm. Lee Grant says, Bruce did a great job on KPFT. Did Bruce, Bruce was very, very good. Bruce is a natural. And in fact, uh, while we were, ta I was taking Bruce home, Ashley called and she was on a speaker phone. And she called and she said, uh, when I told her uh, we're, we're about to let off Bruce, Bruce said, I mean, she said, Bruce, uh, well, she called him Mr. You know, Mr. We are very proper here in, 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 in Texas now. She said, Mr. Pollard, you were so natural. You were so natural. And of course, she gave him kudos for his new grand, uh, grandkid, granddaughter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyhow, um, para ver, para ver. Uh, so yes, Lee Grant. And Lee, I want you on with me too. So remember, we got a date, Lee Grant. You're in the area, so you're going to be in that studio with me. If I have to go get the lasso and pull you in, I want to bring in some conservatives in my space as well, in our space as well. Peggy Lopez says, Bridge MCP, public area surgery left me with a flat lip. Uh, PT on my bladder sent me to the emergency with heart symptoms. Pulled a muscle under my left arm that hit muscles back arm, neck. Oh, God. Uh, let's see. Bruce says, my son teaches and studies history. It fills his cup. Yes, it does. And Bruce, you know, Bruce is a historian himself. Well, he's a, he's a scientist, but he knows his, his history. I, E2247 says, hi, Bruce. I seen you on TV. Looking good, kid. Eric Hayes says, Egberto saying Alzheimer's is a process and need more research. Maybe talk about the FDA and vaccines and mandates and where... Uh, we are now making Pfizer rich, but you still won't discuss an it pound on oil. No, that's not true, Eric. I hit up the pharmaceuticals all of the times. I hit up that the pro that the that the government is in the hawk of politicians. The FDA, of course, as well. And that's the reason I brought the article. The article said it. The title of the article that I quoted today on at KPFT said. The FDA was partly to be blamed. I don't, I'm an honest guy and I blame who needs to be blamed. So please, Eric, stop seeing things through false colored glasses. You know what we do here, brother. You know what we do here. We only tell the truth. Nada más decimos la verdad. All right. Uh, oh, damn, Piggy Lopez, so sorry. Bruce Fowler said, thanks, Lee. They let me travel my little, my middle of the road to a better life for everyone. And he's good. He stick to his guns. But he has a very good, solid value set. That's my brother, Bruce, of course. Uh, Bridge, Rodney, they should give you blood thinners, but take some as. Thank you for telling him that, uh, Bridge. Yeah, take those aspirins. And they normally tell you take the 81 milligrams. 
I would take the one full three, uh, what is it, three something milligram aspirin. And also remember that you take them so that when you go to the hospital, you can tell them that no, you were on aspirin. But we don't want you throwing clots at all, um, Brother Rudnan, at all. Paul Fleming says, I would like to see what's on Jared's laptop. How about you? Not really. Uh, we are not like that. And I know you're kidding, Paul, because we don't really give a flying you know what. Uh, good afternoon, everyone from Maywood, and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, sir. This is our last program before the new year, and I want to wish everybody a Happy New Year as well. Daniel Ados, no, Eric Hayes says, Santos, who cares? Move on. Gosh, keep worrying about nothing. Just cancel him. Move on. The current people like every freaking day and won't answer question. No, this guy's going to be one, one, uh, 218 plus 271, 435th of the vote in Congress. All right? One, 435th of the vote in Congress. No, I care. Daniel Ledo says, at least Egberto is consistent. I remember how outraged he was when it was proven Elizabeth Warren had lied about being Native American for years. Elizabeth Warren did not lie. Her genetics say she has a small component of Native American. Look, I could go out and if I don't, the only reason I don't tell my components and the percentage of my components is because I don't want anybody to think, ah, I'm trying to run away from what I look like, okay? But Elizabeth Warren well, is Native American, and she has a percentage of Native American, punto final. Okay? Eric Hayes, latch Q, and, and you know what? It's funny because when she did the DNA and came out with it, then even the nat Native said, why uh, Native American isn't just having DNA, it's more than that, which they're right. But when it comes to ancestry, she is part Native American. Let's let's just be frank and honest here, folks. Uh, Latchkey Warren. Yes, I worry about Latchkey kids all the time. Uh, let's see what else we got. Maywood says, Bridge MCP aspirin is a blood thinner. Yes, it is. Uh, and that's what we need for, for Rednan, a blood thinner. We need a blood thinner. Every case, it's the same feeling with Biden's son, but just won't. All right. Bridge MCP says, when politicians lie to get into office, it's different than lying all the time. However, politicians should be called for and pay for lying. I agree. Daniel Ledo says, as three-fifths Al Al Algon King, Elizabeth Warren is extremely offensive. Well, sir, again, she has not three-fifths of Indian, as you claim you have, but or not Indian, but native, as you claim you have. I don't know. Algon King, but is what, what is what exactly is Algon King? Let me I I I, I play like I know what Algon King is. I don't know what Algon King is. So you know what? When I don't know something, I look it up. Algonquin, a member of an indigenous people living in Canada, along with Ottawa River and the tributaries and westward to the North Lake Superior. Thank you for teaching me something, Daniel. That's why I have this show. Everybody gets the opportunity to teach me something. Thank you, sir. All right. Eric Hayes says, uh, your comparison is laughable, but keep gaslighting. We don't gaslight here, folks. Uh, Bree says, I know I meant there are scripts and on the, and the OTC. May Wood says, uh, that's not for me. Eric Hayes says, question, do you think capitalism and free markets were responsible for uplifting America for World War II? You know, yes, I agree with that. Now tell me what am I missing? Please tell me. Not because capitalism brought us out of World War II with a booming economy means that some other economic system wouldn't have been better and give better distribution of our, uh, our country's treasure. So, I mean, two things can be true at the same time. And that's, that's, you know, that is where our system allows us to try to think tunnel vision. And we have to get out of that modal, folks. We got to get out of that modal. All right, continuing with the program, let's see what else we got here. I got, uh, I think I got three videos to show you all, and I don't have them queued up right now, but I'm queuing them up as we speak. Uh, so bear with me as I do that, because uh, as I queue these videos up, I will be able to show them to you. So let's get that other one here, and let's get the other one in as well. And then we'll be ready to fly. We'll be ready to fly. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, continuing, Lee, uh, let's see. Bruce Pollard said, Eric, who are they going to give them back to? 
Uh, Daniela Doe says, if a white dude was claiming to be black to get votes and social benefits, you would be confused when a black person takes offense. Well, let's stop. I repeat, Elizabeth Warren has Native American blood running through her veins. Okay? Now, there are a lot of people. Uh, look, my daughter were, was in two organizations. And the reason we had her in two organizations was so that she wouldn't grow up. We grew up in Kingwood. She grew up in Kingwood, Texas, a very white community. And we have to, as a, as a responsible parent, we have to make sure that our daughter could coexist in every, every world, every, every, every part. So she was in a mostly white organization called NCL, if not all white, NCL, Nationals, something, I don't remember what it's called. And also a predominantly black one called uh, uh, Jack and Jill, two different organizations, right? It, these are social organizations where you do work, you, you go ahead and volunteer and do all these, both orga organizations were. But in Kingwood, again, like I said, it's mostly white. We wanted to make sure my daughter had a rounded experience, all right? And the, why do I tell you this? based on what you're saying, Daniel. Now, there are a lot of people that were in Jack and Jill that if you just take a look at these kids in Jack and Jill, some of them look as white as did, uh, as did Elizabeth Warren. But they are black. They grew up in a black household. And also, they, you know, it's like the mother was white and the father was black or the father was white and the mother was black. And the kid took more of the white parent. And you take a look at the kid, and you, you, the kid looks like they, they are, they're simply white. I have nephews where uh, a nephew who has four kids, and one of the four kids look like his wife who is white. Okay? So I don't have a problem there. You know, there, if a white person come and tells me, oh, I'm black. Or as somebody that I look at as a that looked to me like a white person. Remember, I don't believe in race. That looks to me as a white person, and they said, "Well, I'm black." I don't question and say, "Well, exactly how? What do you mean?" I just say, "Oh, okay, that's who you are. That's who you are based on who we are in this country. Fine, fine. I don't care about that." So it's important. It's important, brother Lado. And the reason I spend time on this is not for you because I know you try to pull my my strings. But it's for the people that are listening out there that have heard what you had to say. Why I say these things, okay? Uh, Bruce says, "Who are they going to give out?" I got the one right. Okay, uh, Lee. Lee says, Lee Grant. That is says, uh, Egberto. I noted you criticized the FDA trials as not being representative of my minorities. How is it that relevant since race is a social construct? Let's back up. I'll give you an exact answer for that one. Race as a determining factor in just about all things, genetics exactly, etc., et is a social construct. However, if you have dark pigmentation, right, there are certain chemicals that a very small part of your DNA gives you for that. And there may be reactives in chemicals that may react with a particular pigment and not another. Let's give a classic example. I can be in, being dark-skinned as I am and you light-skinned as you are, Brother Lee Grant. I can absorb more electroviolet radiation than you can. All right? A, a German shepherd that has light here reflects more heat than a German shepherd with dark hair. Those are the kinds of things. Race as a whole is just a social construct, but within any race or within anything, within this one telephone built, the same telephone built by the same company, there are minute differences in there that has nothing to do with it being a telephone. In other words, white, a white man as versus a black man, there are things that are different within them that have nothing to do with their humanity. Okay, so it's not a difficult thing to understand, Brother Grant, when you take a look at it and point it out as it should. Race is a social construct. Uh, when they test things on, let's say they were to test a drug on only white people, there are going to be differences within all those white people, no different than the differences that you would have among black people or the interrelation between them. 
there's just going to be differences. But if you only use white people with a particular genotype, you don't get the plethora of permutations that you would otherwise get. That's a scientific thing, and any doctor in here would corroborate what I just said. Ken F says, Egberto, I think today Cruz got to use as to you as he is only a naturalized citizen, not natural born like McCain, whose parents worked in embassy at the time of birth. Teddy Cruz's mother was only a U.S. citizen. And that is okay. According to accordingly, Ken, because his he was born, I think, in Canada, but because his mother is a U.S. citizen, if she went to a, a con uh, consulate and got his birth uh, got his birth certificate certified he would be considered a natural born citizen uh, so uh, i think it's important for you know i'm not going to try to disparage uh cruz because of his stupidity he is a natural born citizen because his mother was american just like obama was a natural born citizen because his mother was an american all right elizabeth warren releases dna results indicating she has native american heritage Warren's DNA test was first reported by the Boston Globe, which obtained news of the results before they were released by the senator. And again, she then took flack from the Native community for doing that. And the reason they did gave her hell was because of economic reasons, okay? I'll tell you about people going for crumbs. Why did they give her hell? Because they don't want to dilute the pool of little bit resources going to Native Americans. And if we have... Anybody who has native DNA just come out and say, hey, I'm native. I deserve a part of that casino that's being built. They're protecting their interests. But in the case of Elizabeth, she wasn't trying to get her DNA to go claim something. She was trying to get her DNA to refute that when she has told folks she is Native American or has Native American ancestry, that it's not said to be, oh, a lie. And, you know, Ledo could have looked that up. Any time to find out that, in fact, her DNA said she was, in fact, uh, she did have Native uh, American ancestry. And for those who believe in the one-drop rule, that should have been like, oh, wow, she's Native. But anyway, we won't go there. All right. Uh, Warren used it as a stress point to her for her just, no, it's not. Uh, LOL, I have a small portion of my DNA. It's African. So also, uh, I have a pretty a good portion of mine that it, that claims to be European. I don't go out there saying I'm white. Okay? But you can go out and say you do have an African ancestry, uh, uh, Daniel Ledo, if you want to. Okay? You could. Bruce Pollard said it shouldn't matter who her relatives were. It should only matter who she is. Bruce, prison. Uh, Bridge, they are Canada natives who the French unconquered. Yeah, I, I, I read it. I, I read that out. Okay, let's see what else we got here. I'm going to the videos in a minute. Uh, let's, Paul Fleming says, at the very least, we should be able to lock Trump up like did Al Capone. I think we will be able to. Ken F says, citizens, it made Teddy Cruz eligible for fast track paper, not natural borns. Check it out. Um, I, will look, I will look into it, but based on... Uh, I think a Supreme Court ruled about... I don't remember a, a former president. I think... Cruz qualifies as native born just for having a, a mother that was born in the United States. But if I'm wrong, I'll tell you what, Ken, give me the link, uh, Ken F, that proves I'm wrong. And I'll be more than happy to, to go ahead and make my correction. Uh, Paul Fleming says, at least we should be able to lock up Trump. True. Uh, Eric says, you do, you do how you want to do. And as a parent, if you feel that is important, Egberto, great. But all parents do it, get bashed. If they choose the wrong way society say now, think on that for a minute. Look at the school issues today. The school issues are made up issue, but we'll have to discuss that on a full program. Lee Grant says, Warren reveals the DNA test purporting to show she has anywhere between 0.1 and 1.6% Native American ancestry, which gives her between 1.1 and 1.56% Native ancestry. Egberto's race obsession is rotting his brain, and he's on a shame showing his bigotry live on air fascinating oh i'm so sorry that i'm a bigot i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm so sorry all right let's go to the videos um daniel okay i i think i'll leave that one alone all right the first video i'm going to show you is about republicans finally coming out except for uh el senor uh you, you know the the senator 
that we always wonder about, Lindsey Graham. All right, let me, let me set it up this way. Lindsey Graham, a lot of senators are coming out against Donald Trump now. They finally feel like he's a liability. But Lindsey Graham is not sure, so he's still owning, holding on to his own. Check this out, and then we'll take it on the other side. Here are those Republican lawmakers yesterday directly blaming former President Donald Trump for their party's poor performance in the midterms. Take a look. President Trump lost again. Uh, and I know a lot of people in our party uh, love the president, former president. But he said, uh, if you will, the kiss of death for somebody who wants to win a general election. I think his obsession with the 2020 election became a, an albatross and, and a real liability for you know, people who are running, especially in swing states. I think he's less relevant all the time. Um, again, even if you capture all of the, the Trump voters, you may be able to win a primary, but you're not necessarily going to win a general election. Those candidates most closely uh, associated with President, former President Trump underperformed. That is objective. And those who had a little bit more distance tended to do a little bit better. Is former President Trump's endorsement the kiss of death, as another Republican senator said today? One thing Democrats have done a good job. They got their mail-in. They did a better job with early votes, mail-in and early voting. I think people vote based on what they, they think is important to them. They don't vote because one of us tells them they should vote that way. Oh, I don't think this this was any referendum on, on President Trump. Uh, I think this is a referendum on us learning uh, the cycle of how to run an election. We as Republicans have to learn about getting people out to vote. Uh, cats out of the bag with early voting. Donald Trump's presence was so significant here. Republicans are ready to embrace him in 2024 as your standard bearer. Uh, I don't yeah. quite see it that way. Uh, the Trump factor helps some and it hurts some, depending where you're at. Uh, Biden's not overly popular, but they won because I think their financing system is so much better than ours. So, Joe, what does uh, Trump have on Lindsey Graham? I mean, or, 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 what else could it be? I, no I, power. I, I'm, it's I'm, nothing. I'm, no, no, no. I mean, everybody's mm. like, what's he have on Lindsey? What's he have on these people? Nothing. Nothing. Mm. They're shameless. They're afraid to go it's to the voters. They're afraid to g- listen. I've known Lindsey since 94. When it was cool for Lindsey to be part of our group to run Newt Gingrich out of town, he was first in line. He was he was the revolutionary's revolutionary. Mm-hmm. And then when suddenly that was not invoked, suddenly he became John McCain's son mm-hmm. and, you know, a political son. And we were like, what? How do you go from like running coups with us to being like John McCain's son who Senator McCain, God bless him. I loved him. Uh, but he had very little use for us. Right. Right. And, and then he- how do you how do you go? But John McCain was running for president. So Lindsey ran to the power. Mm-hmm. And then when Donald Trump ran for president, President, Lindsey ran to the power. I mean, I, you know, I, I was blessed enough to have quite a few meetings with, with Senator McCain. And, you know, at the end, he was just shaking his head. He's like, right. Lindsey just loves the spotlight. He loves mm-hmm. golfing with the president too much. And just sort of shook his head like poor Lindsey. We've lost him. Poor Lindsey. We've lost him. But yeah, it, finally, we're starting to get senators and some that we would not have expected like the low information senator from alabama and mississippi and i mean it's amazing that these guys actually came out against brother trump you know so i think we are making some progress but we ought to remember this while donald trump is no longer going to be leading the party in the long run Donald Trump just represented who the party or a large percentage of the party has become. So don't fool yourself to think that MAGA has anything to do with Donald Trump. If you remember, I did a a, 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 a um, video a few months ago where I pointed out that this woman came on and she said, you know what, folks? MAGA has nothing to do with Trump. Trump picked up MAGA. Trump didn't give us MAGA. We gave Trump MAGA, remember that. Anyhow, um, I want to address Daniel. I mean, this is fun. 
Uh, and forgive me those of you who think I spend too much time with brother Daniel, but I love Daniel. Daniel says, okay, so just to be clear, how little DNA do I have to have to call myself a black man and be a part of the community? Can I say the N word also? Let me qualify something to you, brother um, Ledo. You could have zero DNA that says you are from sub-Saharan Africa. You could have zero. And if you went into a black community and you were a part of that community, all right? I'm just telling you how, how the folks will see you in that community. You would be a part of that community like everybody else. And, you know, we see this in action all the time. My, my wife is in a predominantly black community, in a predominantly black church. And there are a few uh, white, true white couples in, uh, or white couples and folks in that church. And the truth of the matter is in that church, they have all the, the vernacular, the foods, all of that. That's their culture. That is their culture. Okay, that's the culture they, they, they immerse themselves, their parents immerse themselves in and they came out of. Uh, you know what is amazing? It's amazing that people who don't really look into this race thing as, as I talk about, you know, how natural all this stuff is for them, right? But you make a big issue out of it. So you want to know what percentage you need to be called? You could be 0% and still go ahead and, and, and I can tell you, I can name you friends of mine that are, you know, that that's who they are, okay? So if you decide that you wanted to immerse yourself in the culture, by all means, go. I don't, if, if you're if you're sincere, nobody's going to look at you crazy, brother, Lado, at all. All right, and by the way, as far as using the N-word, I'm, I want to say something about that. I was talking to Bruce about that. I am sorry, right? Uh, l- let me tell you what I think about the N-word. I don't use the N-word, uh, but... I, I think people give too much power to the N-word. And I wish they didn't. Because you can't do a damn thing. You know, uh, the, the way, if, you want, if you want to create chaos, in, in, let, let's say there are a lot of black people here and they're working on doing something important, impressive to move a, a, a city or something forward. And then some white guy comes into the store, or into the area and says, you bunch of N-words. They're doing some useful work or whatever. Too many of them will look up and get all irate. I can't believe you call me what you. No, no. You see how I handle it. Somebody calls me the N words. I ask them if they're having a bad day. Do they? Would they be interested in me doing? You know, helping them out. You. We have given too much power to a word. That's in my opinion. Another way, another thing that I've always said about the N-word, right? We have a lot of rappers that are, that are singing and using the N-word. And a lot of white people are buying these. You, I, in Kingwood, kids routing down my street with all these rap songs that I hate. Okay? I don't listen to them. I listen to a few raps. They're good. I like the olden days, in fact, with Curtis Blow and, and guys like uh, the, the Radicals. But... I would be damned if I am going to buy a song I can't sing. You see what I'm saying? So if these guys are singing a song, I'll be damned if I'm going to call them out if they bought the record and supply the person who is the one using the word in their song. I believe in honesty. I believe in being straightforward. So no, I'll be honest with you. When people use the N-words, I usually have a mirror on me. In other words, if you're using the N-word, that's probably what you are. It's that simple. So if you decide that you felt the need to use the N-word, Daniel, it would be a reflection on you. That's all. Okay, Paul Fleming says, since I've been diagnosed with MS, I've volunteered. I've convinced my family members to volunteers. The responses of joy from the studies are because of mixture of heritage in our family. We are the sum of our parts. I love you for that, Paul Fleming. That's how my family is as well. And by the way, as far as MS is concerned, I did the MS-150 10 years in a row. Bruce did it a few times with me, uh, as well as, the, as did uh, Norman, as did Roberto, as did several of others that's been in this room with us. Those of you that live in, in, in Houston area. 
Uh, let's see what else we got. It also, uh, Peggy Lopez says, Trump is not unique when it comes to whatever is best for me. These GOP leaders followed in lockstep. That is correct. Uh, E2247 says, reducing use of Western currencies. And he spoke about the World Fund, the National Wealth Fund, reducing from 60% to 40%. I think that's a good thing, actually. Uh, I think we need to... Uh, in fact, I would have been happy with a Bolivarian uh, uh, revolution in South America where they created their own economy. They have three big powers or four big powers, which would have been Venezuela, Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. Those four major company countries could have really revolutionized South America if they could work together. But we know there are forces that attempt not to have them work together. Uh, John Carter says, Morning Joe is partially responsible for giving us Trump. I agree, but you know what? They're attempting their utter best to atone right now. And you know how I am, John. You don't have to be that way, brother John. But you know what I feel. I feel like I give people a place to land. Uh, John Carter also says, Lindsay is an opportunist. He is for himself only. I agree. Bridge MCP says, Eric, don't care about Santos line, but all about, over about Warren. It's funny. The inconsistency is amazing. Uh, let's see what else I got here. I got another video. Egberto Willis, people with their own will use words others would not. Happens at all, all the time in a gay world. Got you, girl. Uh, Lee Grant says, Happy New Year's. All my New Year resolution is the good for all mankind by freeing my leftist brothers and sisters from their postmodern leftist insanity. When you and I go to have some coffee or when you come to the studio with me, uh, brother Lee Grant, we're going to have a lot to talk about. Be careful, I may be the one changing your mind. Bruce Pollard said, I did the MS-158 years in a row, and then I got MS. That's a sad part. But you know what, Bruce? You're doing very well. Uh, you're walking a lot better than you were when the first time I picked you up. So, man, power to you, brother. Power to you, brother. All right, the second video that we're going to talk about is, um, is about Southwest. Southwest Airlines went in shambles. They've been told for years that their system was antiquated and because they didn't use a, a wheel and spoke or, 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 or what is it, a hub and spoke system, because they didn't do that, it made recovery from these types of storms much more difficult. They had a lot of money, but they gave all the money to the shareholders and the executives. They decided it was shareholders over customers and you know what that's capitalism for you so let's go ahead and play this and then we'll go ahead and take it on the other side some of the morning's opinion pages tackle the southwest story let's start with the washington post its editorial board says southwest put investors ahead of its customers and employees writing in part this what's particularly egregious is the fact that southwest had the money to upgrade systems but chose to hand it to the shareholders instead the airline recently announced it would pay a dividend again that amounts to 428 million a year Southwest also received more than $7 billion from the U.S. federal government to shore up its operations during the pandemic. It paid a quarterly dividend for years before the coronavirus struck, signaling to Wall Street that the airline had cash to spare. In other words, given a choice, Southwest put its investors ahead of its customers and crew. Its logo was in the shape of a heart, and its stock symbol is love, L-U-V. All of that, as well as Southwest's bottom line, has now been put at risk by its leadership's short-sighted decisions to ignore needed investments while tending to investors. The editorial board of the Wall Street Journal, on the other hand, is warning against federal involvement. It writes in part, the scheduling meltdown at Southwest Airlines is one for the business record books, and the carrier will pay a price for months or years in damaged reputation. The only worse result for seating passengers would be to put Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg in charge. Democrats care less about stranded passengers than they do about gaining more federal control over the airline industry. Washington receded from airline management in the 1970s, 
and the ensuing competition opened air travel to the masses. Politicians love to kick an industry when it's down, but passengers can take their market revenge on Southwest without political help that will make air travel worse and more expensive. So we've got some dueling viewpoints there. Let's bring in the co-anchor of CNBC Squawk Box, Aaron Ross Sorkin, to weigh in. So Andrew, talk to us about what you're hearing about Southwest. What's next in terms of oversight or, as that, as I put it, passenger revenge? Well, look, I, I would just start with this. We keep talking about Southwest as if this is a Southwest-specific problem, and it is in this instance. But I think there's a larger issue, which is to say, you look at the deregulation, which the Wall Street Journal mentioned in that editorial that you were just reading from over the last you know, 30, 40 plus years, not only was the industry deregulated, there was remarkable consolidation that took place. And that has uh, created this almost oligopoly, uh, in certain cases, monopoly kind of power that has led to incentives, or in this case, disincentives for companies like Southwest, which used to compete on price and used to compete on brand, but so much of that competition has withered away because there hasn't been that type of competition in years. So many of the slotting systems at airlines across at airports across the country country are controlled by airlines so that there isn't that type of competition which would force a Southwest or others to invest in these type of things. You know, you look at what's happening in Europe. They're, they have created a bill of rights uh, where, you know, if you're a consumer and your flight is delayed or get, gets canceled, they pay a hefty penalty. But at the same time, there's competition uh, in that marketplace that has forced those airlines to actually try uh, to help those customers in a way that they haven't in the United States. So we can blame the airlines themselves and, and they deserve a lot of that blame. But we also have to, I think, look at the larger system. And as we start talking Talking about Bill of Rights and all sorts of other things, you have to also take into uh, consideration the competition uh, perspective. Otherwise, what we're going to do is actually just raise prices across the board because these costs are not going to just be borne by shareholders. They will get caught. They'll be borne by customers. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. He nailed it. It, the government has to intervene. The government has to create regulations like they have in Europe where the, there is a, a, a traveler's bill of rights, a customer bill of rights. But above and beyond that, competition has to be open to take away the price and power that these guys have to monopolize on markets. If you notice, the Wall Street Journal came out right away. Uh, they, they're scared. The government may intervene. The government may actually try to help the American people. And we don't want that. So Pete Buttigieg, stay in your lane. And then we have the sycophants who are going to say, yeah, you know, we don't want the government in there. You know, the sycophants are, we don't want the government in there. Uh, you're going to. What can I say, folks? Like I said, there are some people who we can help. And there are simply some we cannot. All right. The last video of the day is about Tulsi Gubbard and how she really clocked George Santos, the representative from New York, who lied just about everything about his resume. I don't even know if people know who, where this guy came from. For all you know, this guy could have dropped in from Mars because we haven't a clue who this guy is. He has lied and told everything about himself that isn't true. But you know what? That means that the people of that district did not vote, did not vote for that guy. So let's go ahead and play that, and then we'll take it on the other side. Republican House leadership is still silent over what, if anything, they will do about, you know who, Congressman-elect George Santos, the incoming lawmaker, admitted earlier this week to deliberately lying about several key details of his background, including education, work history, and even personal life. That's all, just all of it. But even without a word from leadership, many on the right are calling for a response themselves. The Republican Jewish coalition slams Santos. In a statement, the group CEO writes this, this. He deceived us and misrepresented his heritage. In public comments and to us personally, he previously claimed to be Jewish. 
fellow Republican, New York Congressman elect veteran Nick LaLota responded on the con- to the controversy on Twitter, writing as a Navy man who campaigned on restoring accountability and integrity to our government. I believe a full investigation by the House Ethics Committee and, if necessary, law enforcement is required. The Nassau County Republican Committee chair said in a statement that he is deeply disappointed in Mr. Santos and expected more than just a blanket apology. The damage that his lies have caused to many people, especially those who have been impacted by the Holocaust, are profound. However, he stopped short of calling for Santos to resign. But Trump advisor Jason Miller went all the way. In a social media post, he simply wrote this, get rid of this loser. Santos appeared on Fox News yesterday in an interview with a fill-in host, former Democratic Congressman Tulsi Gabbard, who repeatedly called him out for his lies. What does the word integrity mean to you? Well, Tulsi, thank you for having me. You know, um, to to answer your question, integrity is very important. And like I I said to the New York Post, embellishing What what does it mean, though? What does it mean? Because the the meaning of the word actually matters in practice. Of course, it it means to, to carry yourself in an honorable way. And I made a mistake. And I think humans are flawed. And we all make mistakes, Tulsi. The thing is, Congressman elect, uh, integrity means, yes, carrying yourself with honor, but it means it means telling the truth, being a person of integrity. And if I were one of those in New York's third district right now, now that the election is over and I'm finding out all of these lies that you've told, not just one little lie or one little embellishment, these are blatant lies. My question is, do you have no shame? Do you have no shame in the people who are now you're asking to trust? Trust you to go and be their voice for them, their families, and their kids in Washington? Tulsi, I can say the same thing about the Democrats and, and the party. Look at Joe Biden. Joe Biden's been lying to the American people for 40 years. He is the president of the United States. Democrats oh, resoundly support him. Do they have no shame? Are you Jewish? We've got a letter that your campaign sent out earlier this year, which reads as follows. As a proud American Jew, I've been to Israel numerous times for educational, business, and leisurely trips. You said there in that letter that you are, quote, a proud American Jew. How do you how do you explain that? My heritage is Jewish. I've always identified as Jewish. I was raised a practicing Catholic. I think I've gone through this. Even I've not not being raised a practicing Jew. I've always joked with friends and circles, even with in the campaign. I'd say, guys, I'm Jewish. Remember, I was raised Catholic. So, look, I understand everybody wants to nitpick at me. I mean, to go ahead and say I am Jew dash ish, meaning Oh, I wanted to sound Jewish, but what can I say? I mean, it is shameful that the Republican leadership has not come out and spoken up against what this guy has done. And not only that, they should all call for him to give up his position and have a new election in that district. Yes, the Democrat will likely win that because it would have been proven that a modus operandi for the Republican Party is lying. And I don't say that like uh, like a partisan. I say that because that's what they do. Here in Texas, they were lying about crime. They were lying about health care. They were lying about gun violence. They lie about everything because our media is on the take and never, never challenges them as they should. But it is the party that lies more than any party that has ever existed in my lifetime and likely in the lifetime of this country. So, yes. Uh, Tulsi Gubbard, someone that I'm not fond of, did the right thing in the way she handled him. And as it turns out, since that interview, there's a hell of a lot more that has come out about this guy. This guy is probably going to make it on into Congress, but I don't know if he can stay there because he's likely going to be indicted on a whole lot of stuff. Anyhow, anyhow, let's get busy. It's wow. It's 57 already. It sure flew, huh? Uh, John Carter is replying to Eric Hayes, who had said that uh, that that <laughs> that Buttigieg needed to fix the the streets on Notre Dame, which sounds kind of silly, right? Notre Dame is private property, and here is what Carter says: If true, you ever think that the university may be responsible to care for the roads on its campus? Yeah, thank you, thank you. 
Uh, Eric says, lefty Sam Bankman freed, received you to into trust in him and spent fraudulent millions on supporting candidates about that anything. Nope, crickets. All right, here's the deal. Let's get this straight. Sam Bankman freed. Sam Bankman freed gave the same amount of money to Democrats as he did Republicans. Neoliberal politicians are all on the take, Republicans and Democrats. Sam Freed, of uh, Sam Bank Freed, uh, Sam Bankman Freed is again an equal opportunity giver to both. That's a fact. You don't have to listen to me. Look it up. Look it up, my brother. If you are interested in the truth and not just sticking your head in the sand, Look it up. He admitted as well. He said, I gave the same amount to Democrats as I did to Republicans. And if you admit that he gave to one Republican, then you're, you're admitted that he's a bi-directional, I mean, bi, bi-partisan giver. Oh, my God. The, whoo. But he says, why do these people and their followers always not only uh, not take blame, but bring up the left because they don't have anything else to fall back on? Peggy Lopez says, my mother was born to a Jewish mother. My father was born to a Jewish mother. I am not Jewish because the Jewishness flows from the mother and I have not converted. Interesting to me, lie. Uh, my mother was not born to a Jewish mother. Yeah, it, 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 it goes down from the mother. I thought the, the new Jews, uh, Jews um, thing was that as long as you had one Jew parent, a Jewish parent, then that's the case. But I could be wrong. Bridge MCP, Egberto's well getting late. I want to thank all of us for a good year. Disagree and agree. Learn and love. Happy New Year to us all. Happy New Year. Eric says, well, I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to give my, given that today's the last day of the, uh, the, the last program of the year, the first thing I want to say is please support the program at, uh, and I'm going to give you that address in a minute. Please support our program as best you can. Uh, because uh, we need to stay alive. And given the, the, the info that you hear from Eric and Ledo, how brainwashed they are, you can understand why we need programs like this. So please go ahead and uh, support us at politicsandright.com slash support. You can all, if you want to give directly, either one time or monthly, one time or monthly, go to politicsandright.com slash PayPal. Or you can support us on Patreon by going to politicsandright.com slash Patreon. Please remember, support us by getting our books and shopping at our store. You can get our books at politicsandright.com slash books. And you can shop at our store by going to politicsandright.com slash store. Once again, uh, you can support. Oh, thank you, Bridge. Thank you. Thank you for that super chat. Hoping for a happy, healthy new year for our PDR Posse. Thank you for that super chat, Bridge MCP. Uh, anybody on, on here can also give us a super chat or go ahead and join our passive by hidden join on YouTube. Or again, the all encompasses place for you to support us is at politicsunright.com slash support. Now, with respect to Ask Egberto Anything, Ask Egberto Anything will be active tomorrow. Uh, you can go ahead and sign up for Ask Egberto Anything. I wonder if I'm going to get a good crew or not. Because it's New Year's Eve, but ask Egberto anything. Just go ahead and sign up at politicsunright.com slash ask Egberto anything. Thank you. So, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That is, oh, I'm sorry. I got mixed up. It, Friday is the 30th, not the 1st. Oh, I guess we're going to have to do it when it is supposed to be held. My bad. Ask Egberto anything is week after. I'm sorry. I got mixed up on, in my mind. All right, so again, once again, please support the program however you can at politicsdoneright.com slash support has all the different options. My name is Egberto Willis. I want to wish all of you a happy new year. Let's stay positive. Whether you agree with me or not, keep coming back. Please share. Let all the, bring us into the fold. Let's bring everybody into the fold. Let's grow together. My name is Egberto Willis. Happy new year. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Oh. We, 
spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.